Hi, I'm Craig O'Neill, and if you know anything about me, you know I like to tell stories, to reminisce, and I've always wanted to find a way just to go back in time every now and then and take a look around, to look at the good old days, you know, that brought us to where we are now, that shaped the way that we are today, like 1957, 60 years ago. Where were you? Okay, I know. Some of you weren't born yet, but as for me, I was seven years old and I was learning how to dance. And like many other Arkansas kids, I was learning my moves by watching one very special program that aired right here on THV 11 from this very spot. Well, thanks to the magic of TV, we can in essence go back in time and take a look back at one of Little Rock's biggest years with Steve Show. Do you remember when we fell in love? Once upon a time. This was my chance. If you didn't dance, you didn't have any reason to be here. No one, two. Little Rock was considered a sort of upper side southern city. It's unique to Arkansas. When we were young and down. Historians have sort of addressed those undercurrents of disillusionment in American society in the 1950s. You know, it's the birth of the teenager. It's the idea of, you know, uh, the, the wild one, the, you know, the, the kind of rockers and uh, the kind of disaffected youth. Back in 1957, teen dance shows were all the rage. Sixty years ago, a young man from Newport, Arkansas, got a job right here in the capital city as an announcer. Steve Stevens sat down with me to talk about emceeing the TV show that had every Arkansas teen rushing home from school so they could dance the afternoon away in their living room. It was American Bandstand before there was American Bandstand. How's it feel coming back here? It feels wonderful. Do memories flood your consciousness as you walk through always, those doors? Always. Yes, always. As you sit in this studio, what comes back to your mind? Oh, the, the myriad of kids who used to come down here and how happy they were and just dancing like crazy. And the studio was filled with kids. You know, busloads from all over the state would pull up out front of Channel 11 and they'd pour in. As a matter of fact, the studio became so full, the fire department came, <laughs> Marshall came down and he said, you got to restruct the kids here. He said, it's a fire hazard. And, and so we issued tickets. And so then some of the kids started uh, issuing uh, counterfeit tickets. And that it just, it just kept getting bigger. So and bigger. this show gave birth to counterfeiters. Uh, I'm, I wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were all good kids. They were, and I'm surprised that you could you move around in the studio. Were the kids asking you for your autograph? You know, that's interesting. Uh, I don't think anybody ever asked me for my autograph because this was their gathering. And that's when I realized that I was not the star of the show. The kids were the stars of the show. But how did you get to be a star? You're from Newport. You're right out of the Army. You're running this DJ show. Uh, make that Marine Corps, please. Excuse me. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. The <laughs> there Marine a Corps. There's a difference. Yes, sir. Semper Fi. But you've got, <laughs> you've got this little show in Newport, and all of a sudden, you've got this TV dance show that's really starting to catch on. Serendipitous. So, uh, Sonny Burgess and the Pacers, he was my childhood friend. We graduated together. He had a rock and roll band. And he said, Steve, we're going down Little Rock Channel. Eleven has invited us down to be on the noon show. Uh, would you like to ride down with us? I said, well, there's nothing to do in Newport, so why not? So while they were rocking and rolling, rehearsing, I began to stroll around the TV studio. I'd never been on a TV studio before. And there was a door that was ajar, and on it said manager, and I pushed it open, and there was Jack Bomar, who went on to become a great part of my, my life, become a great mentor. And I said, uh, you, you don't need any announcers, do you? And he says, well, you know, as a matter of fact, we do. So I walked into this studio, and... Uh, Bomar and some others said, you see that studio out there where we are now? And uh, it, there's a mock kitchen set up. Go out there and sell all the appliances in it. They didn't know that every summer, high school, college, I'd worked at my father's appliance furniture store selling that. So I walked out there and I said, hey, take a look at that oven, big enough for a big old turkey, and check out that refrigerator. <laughs> 
and so they called and offered me a job. It's far less than I thought than I thought they would. But you know what? It taught me another lesson. If you want something, you need to go for it, regardless of the circumstances, because it's what you want. And it's what I wanted. I wanted to vault from radio to TV. This was my chance. And it really didn't matter what the salary was. Did you get that? The teens were the stars, which could explain why, even today, they have such fond and vivid memories of being on that show. Like Betty Faye, who once entered a contest to win a date with a teen heartthrob. Did not tell my parents, did not tell my sister, did not tell anybody. Put it in the mail, didn't even think any more about it. One day I went to the mailbox and it said, KTHV Channel 11. I went, oh my goodness. And it said that I was a finalist. I came down and I was interviewed and they called me that night and told me that I had won. The day uh, that he was to come at Steve's show, uh, Steve brought me out. He said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry but Tommy cannot come. I said, well, oh, that's okay, that's okay. And about that time, he comes through the drapes, and here he comes, and all the kids went crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy. You know, one of the things about THV 11 is that we're still in the studio where it all started back in the 50s. There are still spaces that evoke vivid memories in Steve, like the hallway just outside the studio. All right now, this is where the kids all came down to go in to dance, right here. So these steps were still here? Right here, yeah. Dozens of kids, mm -hmm. young Crabbing. footsteps, Crabbing. energetic, yeah. fired up. Right, right, right. Their hormones raging. <laughs> <laughs> there were girls at Steve's show. <laughs> Did you ever have trouble getting them to start dancing? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Are you kidding? The more you dance, the better you get. If you didn't dance, you didn't have any reason to be here. I wasn't supposed to be dancing because of our religion. But my sister and I spent hours in my bedroom teaching me how to dance. Did you have an open door policy? Yeah, and had a record player in there. I played records for them. It was all before the chill. We'd help him pick out what sounded good that we could dance to. We had to really behave and be quiet and be good, and they let us do whatever we wanted. Ready it's so weird to stand here roll. right now. I'm having this urge to dance. <laughs> yeah. Once it gets in your bones, it's there. Well, I'm going to go. start on my right, and you're going to start on your left. You start on your right, okay. okay. So we're going to go one, two, back step, and then you come back up, okay? amazing, but you've just gotten bits and pieces. We've got the full stories at THV11.com. I'll tell you, there is one story that does stand out about a couple that began a relationship after meeting on this show and decided to start going steady. It's about a ring, where he got it and how he gave it. Drugstore, jewelry store. Uh, and then, you know, I picked Marilyn up and I put it in the ashtray in the car. <laughs> I said, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not too bad, really 56 years. Maybe it wasn't such a bad deal. <laughs> I've had to work a lot. <laughs> Let's talk about the dancing they did on Steve's show. It was called The Bop, had its roots back in the 40s with the swing and the jitterbug. But you know what, that dance survives to this day with a meeting every Wednesday night in Little Rock of the Bop Club. We play all kinds of music here, fast, slow, in between. No matter the music, oldies, funk, rhythm, and blues, there's a matching style of the bop. Bop is a time that adults can be playful. With fans so devoted, they have their own club. $25, and you're a member. 
dance is such a great form of exercise, and you meet really good people that are dancing. And in Patty Brady's case, remember. I grew up doing the bar. I really did. Watching from her home in Augusta, she never missed the Steve show on THV 11. The guy that I had such a crush on, that was so cute and a great dancer, was named Charlie Crouch. When the Beta Club from Augusta High School went to Little Rock for the annual convention, she saw her chance. And so we all went to the Steve show on that Saturday. And Steve announced there'd be a dance contest. And that's when Patty saw a miracle when her heartthrob, Charlie Crouch, asked her to be his partner. We won the dance contest and we got to go up and Steve told everyone we had won the dance contest and rewarded us with a six pack of coats. You see, the bop lends itself to meeting that special someone. She started going to the bop club, so I started going to the bop club. And thus, another example of the power of dance and romance. We started dancing together, fell in love on this dance floor, and got married on this dance floor before one of our Wednesday dances. You know, there's a little more to it than that. If you watch the bop closely, you understand its magic. On Steve's show, and why it's survival through six decades. No matter how many twists and turns on the floor, people never lose touch. Speaking of never losing touch, Sandra Hubbard is a documentarian and filmmaker who was on Steve's show. She wanted to do all she could to harvest those memories. It was a real happy time. It, made, it, it added to all of, to all of our self-esteem. I mean, I, I probably am a television documentary filmmaker, partially because I came to Steve's show. Sandra's documentary is not available online, but you can head to THV11.com to find out how to get a copy. You know, after all this time, there are still some things I've always wanted to know about this show that I watched growing up. And coming up, I got a chance to sit down with Steve Stevens and get the answers I've always wanted. Next. And now, things I've always wanted to know about Steve's show, beginning with the fact that this show that we're talking about was so popular in Arkansas, I've always had one burning question. Why did it never catch on nationally? Tell me. Or even regionally? Well, tell me about it. Because I watched as a kid growing up in Little Rock. Little Rock was off the beaten entertainment path. It was off the path, you know, pretty, pretty much about most of things in 1957 and as a matter of fact I called Wink Martindale over at Memphis he had a show similar to mine and I said Wink you are on the path for entertainers Johnny Cash etc so when they come to your show would you tell them about my show in Little Rock which is just a hundred miles away and they might want to come on over and that happened we got you know a lot of entertainers that way Johnny Cash Fabian uh, wow. J uh, Brenda Lee uh, it, uh, on and on. We, we, we just had a, a great deal uh, of them. Was there ever a time during the show, you had so many kids, space was limited, where you lost control of the never, show? Never. Never. The only thing the kids did slightly deviant from the norm was occasionally they would smoke a cigarette outside. Uh, it was extremely uh, and extraordinarily well-behaved group of kids in 1957. They'd all been brought up right. It was, a, it was a great time of life. It was between two wars. It was just a peaceful time, kind of a Norman Rockwell time, really. The African-American presence on the show. You know, that's incredible. Uh, I reflected back on that. We never had a phone call, never had an African-American uh, child show up at the show. It was, you know, at that time, certain things were unsaid. Oh yeah, if this came on in 57, we know what was going yeah, on in Little yeah, Rock. Yeah, but the turmoil was going on. Right. But it was as if it didn't occur. This was like an enclave of innocence. If you were from the Heights or you were from Southwest Little Rock, if you could dance, you were in. Do you look back on it after 60 years, you look back on this place, that time in your life, what was the lesson it taught you? Well, I never thought about that. It, ta it taught me uh, how to be more humble because uh, you just never know what might come your way. And 
sometimes you get lucky, I, as I did. I, I'll always be I'll always be grateful to Channel 11 because uh, it opened the door for so many wonderful possibilities that occurred in my life. Our fondest memory is Steve. Steve was a good guy. He was always very generous and he treated us like we were adults. Of course we weren't. I wanted to be here every day. Of course I didn't get to come every day. Like everybody says, it's more like being with your family or just friends. But, uh, he, uh, he was an excellent role model and such a mentor to so many of us. He knew everybody and treated everyone well. And the boy still does. He treated us so beautifully. He was so good to us. He was a mentor to all of us. And um, I don't know, he, he taught us how to behave. Sometimes I wondered how he really managed to do that uh, because we would get excited and talk out of place and, and talk when they were having a commercial or something like that. Things were different then. Friendships. I'm good. Don't, don't, you know, can you cut this up? But I, I'm such a crier. But see these people sitting over here? They're, they've been my friends since I was 12. Golly, I wish I could tell you something other than it was just a lot of fun. We had a good time. It was the good times that we didn't have any problems in our life. We weren't rich. Uh, no, none of us were wealthy, and uh, we, but we thought we were. Yeah, we well, almost like I really would have, I wouldn't have been surprised because we were a close group. We we were from everywhere. Oh, we'd pair off and dance and uh, we didn't necessarily dance with the same person the whole time. We'd mix it up. As I walked in here today, just a flood of memories. Just, I mean, this is the first time I've been in KTHV since the last time I danced here. Happy days. Like happy. I remember all these people because they were really, they really were the stars. You know, when you think about it, you think that if THV 11 was going to have a special, it would be about Christmas. But in a lot of ways, this was because you've met people who became close, who became like family, who were involved in the community who built something magical, qualities that we cherish with Christmas, and qualities that are contained in the phrase that we use all the time these days here, this is home, a phrase that actually began in those days, 60 years ago, with Steve's show. Hi-ho, Steve-o. Do you remember when we fell in love? Once upon a time, Remember how we used to talk Underneath the stars I'll remember you forever When we were young and shy You know, when I reflect back on things, I'm reminded of something the, the poet Sophocles said 2,000 years ago. He said, sometimes you have to wait until the evening to see how beautiful the days have been. And it was, it was, really a good time.